Hello, my friends. Welcome back to The Morning Mindset. I'm so thankful you're here. I'm glad you're here to get your mind aligned with the truth of God's Word because we really want to see things this day through His eyes, through the lens of what He says is true. Today, we're continuing our series of what happened to you and for you when you were saved, and we're looking at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Before we do, I want to real briefly mention again, my wife and I have launched a new podcast for Christian couples who are married or looking to be married. It's called You and Me and Jesus, and I think by that name, you get the drift of what it's all about. You can find out more through the link on the description for this episode. Okay, let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. This is a very famous verse. If you do any kind of scripture memory, this is usually included in the verses that are suggested for you to memorize. And there's reason for that. This is one of the fundamental truths of our salvation. And when we think about what happened when we placed our faith in Jesus Christ, this is usually the issue we all think about. It's our actual salvation, the forgiveness of our sins. Let's look at it. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one can boast. So friends, what Paul is telling us here is that salvation, the forgiveness of our sins, and all the things that we've been going through in this series come to us by grace, through faith. Now we have some positional words in there, the words by and the words through. Those are crucial for us to understand, so don't skip over those. Let's think this through for a moment. By grace, we've been saved. So the means by which this happens is God's grace. What that means practically is that God made the decision for us to be saved, not us. God is the one who determined he was going to make a way and he was going to reach out and be the instigator of our salvation. So God did this of his own choice. We didn't have anything to do with it. It means we didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. Anyhow, there's nothing in us that merits God's favor. He just gives us his favor because he chooses to do so. And it says you've been saved by grace through faith meaning that our part in this is just to accept that God has determined he wants to give us salvation and freely just accept the gift. It's like on your birthday and people bring you gifts or people send you a gift maybe and you receive it from Amazon and you find it on the on the porch there. Well, you have to choose. I'm going to pick up that box. I'm going to open that box. I'm going to see what's in that. Oh, there's a card from grandma. This note tells me it's a gift from her. I'm going to receive this. And I'm going to accept that it's now mine because she decided to give it to me. You see, our salvation is the very same way. God himself determined, I'm going to give my people this salvation. And I'm going to do it out of the goodness of my heart. Not because they earned it or deserve it, but because I love them. And they, their only part is to receive it by faith. You see, Paul goes on. He really wants to drive this home. And he says, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. So what does the word this refer to? Man, there's been a lot of debate about this over the years. Does the this refer to the gift of salvation is not our own doing, but it's the gift of God? Or does it refer even to our faith that is not our own doing? It also is the gift of God. Well, I think the answer to those two questions is yes. (laughs) It's both. Both God's grace to give us salvation to give us salvation and our faith to receive it are gifts from God. Because if you remember in a previous episode, just a few days ago, we talked about how we had a dead spirit toward God. And it only comes alive when God makes it come alive through the gift of his Holy Spirit. And so that coming back to life so that we can respond to God is God's doing, not our own. We don't have the ability to make a dead spirit come back to life, but God does. And it's that gift of renewing our spirit so that we can respond to him in faith is what Paul's talking about right here. And he says it's not a result of works so that no one can boast. Friends, 
God wants all the glory. And why does he want all the glory? Well, it's not because he's some insecure egotist. It's because he knows that when we see him as the great and good giver of everything we have, we're able to then receive from him all the goodness of who he is. And that's the very best thing for us as his people. Lord God, fill us up with an appreciation for your good gift of salvation and the means by which it came. Lord, you are worthy of all of our praise and we want our lives to express that today in the way we live. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.